Where he challenged there from uh, occupied East Jerusalem. Uh, let's go live now and hear from Riyadh Mansour, uh, the Palestinian American diplomat. It is high time now for the state of Palestine, which was called for the establishment of two states in Resolution 181 in 1947 by the General Assembly. So it is the General Assembly, along with the Security Council, the international community, to accept and to invite the other state, which is the state of Palestine, to become a full member in the United Nations. After we have these two equal full member in the United Nations, we open the door slightly in the direction of peace, and we hope that the Security Council, which is trusted in the maintenance of international peace and security, to allow for that door to open slightly in the direction of the implementation of the two-state solution, which requires the end of occupation and the independence of the state of Palestine. Today is a historic moment. I must congratulate Ambassador Vanessa from Malta, which we love immensely, the people and the leadership, that maybe a historic thing will be accomplished in the month of April. Thank you very much. Okay, that was uh, Riyadh Mansour, Palestine's uh, Palestinian UN ambassador. Uh, let's head to the United Nations, speak to our correspondent there, Gabriel Elizondo. Uh, so, uh, talk us through uh, a bit about what's happening in the chamber right now. Well, nothing is happening in the Security Council chamber right now because they just met in a, in a formality. They have now decided to continue this uh, application process by Palestine for full UN membership. And the next step is at three o'clock, which is a little under three hours from now, uh, the Security Council committee on the new members will meet for the first time. And this will be the first time they meet. It'll be behind closed doors. There'll be no cameras inside, no live feed of it at all. And they will meet privately. And who is they? It's actually the 15 Security Council members that are also part of this committee. And they will begin discussing this application by Palestine for full UN membership. Now, what's interesting here is that uh, the, the Council has has also decided that they want this process to move expeditiously. And uh, they're saying that they're hoping that this is completed. When I say completed, I mean uh, the Security Council discussions about this application by Palestine are completed uh, by the end of April, so about another three weeks or so. In 2011, when Palestine last applied for, for full UN membership, uh, the Security Council debated it for about two months. So they're looking to shorten that time frame right now. The big picture here is, is the Security Council will not ultimately decide. The Security Council will just ultimately have to get amongst themselves behind closed doors. And if they reach a consensus that the application should move forward, they will then announce that and it will then go to the General Assembly for final ratification. Uh, it would need two thirds in the General Assembly. By all accounts, Palestine has that. The issue now is, according to the UN Charter, it first has to be uh, approved by the Security Council. And that is the process that is now taking place with this first closed door meeting that we expect in about three hours from now, the first of potentially several closed door meetings. Now, this is important. What I'm about to say is that if one of the five permanent members of the Security Council decides to veto uh, this, it would be a veto, and it would not then go to the General Assembly. It would be over at that point. It's clear that the U.S. still does not support Palestine being a full U.N. member. We asked uh, the, the deputy U.S. ambassador that a few hours ago. We said, has your position changed since 2011? He said, no, it has not changed. So, uh, you know, so there are closed door meetings now. And the question is, can the rest of the council, when we think that 
a, a, a fair number of council members, we believe, already have said they support Palestine's uh, uh, full UN membership. Are they able to convince the U.S. not to veto it and send it on to the General Assembly? That is really the big question right now. Yeah, it's interesting what you say there about the United States member, because uh, when we heard from Riyad Mansour there, albeit it was very brief, uh, he seemed to be quite positive uh, about where this is likely to go. Yeah, he was, because this is a historic moment. <clears throat> I mean, he <clears throat> really knows uh, that the U.S. has veto power. He knows that better than anybody in the U.S. <clears throat> is certainly willing to use that veto power. They've shown that in, in ceasefire resolutions since October 7th. But listen, I mean, this is still a historic moment for Palestine because this was officially the second time now uh, that they have now <clears throat> gotten this far, at least, in this process at the UN for full UN membership. And it's important for them. And sure, it's clear the U.S. will potentially use their veto power here. Uh, but that doesn't mean that this is now not at the top of the agenda of the Security Council. It clearly is. And the fact that they want to resolve this in the next month or so, so shows how quickly they want to try to, to, to expedite this process. Okay. Thank you for explaining all that to us. Gabriel Elizondo there for us in New York.